Oh, what's up everybody? It's me, Riley, and Daddy's behind here. Hello. And I got my fun plane I like to fly that I crashed and lost and then found <laughs> and then muddy. It was a hard experience. It was a hard experience. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, so this video series, this is an introduction and then we're going to actually do some stuff with this remote in this video. In 15 minutes. Yeah, we gotta hurry up. <clears throat> this video series that we're going into now is about me and Riley and potentially some of the other kids trying to get into RC planes. So as a kid uh, in high school slash college, I built and played with some RC stuff. And I watched a video about it too. Yep, and it's actually some of the first videos I ever posted on YouTube was a live stream video recorded VCR battery operated blah 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 and I filmed those things and put them on my YouTube go check them out so Riley has purchased this plane it is the Sky, Sky Eagle TR C385 number one yeah number one <laughs> so I'm gonna show you guys a video probably the next one of her flying this and I told her if she can learn how to fly this I'll go to my dad's house which is back in Indiana and I will get my plane, which is up there, and I'll ship it back, which my dad did. Thanks, Dad. Say thanks, Grandpa. Thank you, Grandpa. I'm excited. But it's only the frame. It's actually one of my friends, Michael Wellmeyer. So, cheers, Michael. And, um, basically, she learned how to fly this thing. So, I said, okay. So, I shipped it back. It's sitting up there. And... We got that remote. I mean, the old one and then the new... Set. Kind of the newest to, you know. So, this is an old remote from a subscriber sent this to me many years ago, and I've actually used this for all kinds of projects, including remotely operating and detonating the 10,000 joule capacitor bank. Yes, I used this for that. And this is a short range radio, so unfortunately, although this is a great radio, we can't use it. This is Wait, a. Yeah? This is meant, no, because it's a short range radio, it won't go very far. Oh, you mean if I hook that up to this, it's... That, it won't fly with that one, but it'll fly with... with the... Yes. Oh, okay. So, this is made by Horizon Hobby, and it is a DSM transmitter. So, DSM is their branded thing. They got a DSM-1, DSM-2, and a DSM-X. This is a DSM-2 transmitter. It is a five-channel, and what I learned is that we can actually use the higher-grade radios to bind this as a trainer remote, which is pretty sweet. That I can use. However, this radio, which we have purchased, this is a For DX. $100. This is a DX6E. We bought this off eBay for 100 bucks. It was not cheap, but the radios are very expensive, so that was a good deal. But as you can see, this has a little bit of problems and shaking in there. Something shaking. So this was known by the person selling it. I'm fairly confident that the remote itself works, but it's got a few mechanical problems. So I figured, hey, let's try it. And so I bought it. Stuff. Here it is. So this video is actually about trying to fix this remote. So let's bring you over to the bench. We'll take this apart and see if we can figure this out. Ready? Yes. All right. Excited. Let's check it out. Oh, that thing can go high. Okay, so Riley, um, <clears throat> first of all, show me what you know about this remote. Tell me what each one of these do. That's all I want you to tell me. Aileron. Yeah. This. this is the throttle. Yep. And do these first. You know these. This is the elevator. Yep. Which is the thing in the back of the tail that goes up and down. Aileron. Those are the ailerons. Those are the ones on the wing tips. And this part is the tail. The tail. So that's exactly it. So she knows enough already to explain this stuff in technical details, which is awesome. So this remote is super, super cool because on the back here, you have this thing that says normal, center, normal. And so what that means is you can take this off, you can push this in the center, and instead of this returning to center, it will actually... Um, be free or be centered. So right now this one's free. It stays where you put it because that's the throttle for a plane. But if you want to fly, fly a quadcopter, then you actually change this to center and then it will actually be center. And if you want to switch these two, you can flip this. So I think there's something in this 
that's ca that's causing <clears throat> this to stick. This is this is sticky. That's not supposed to happen. It should be. Because this is supposed to be like this. Yeah, it should be like this one, so that when you let go of the sticks, the it goes in the middle. The ailerons and the elevator elevator is correct again. So, first thing is how in the heck do we get this apart? Um, we'll figure that out in a second. I'm gonna put this back in there for now. Try finding the screws in here. Ooh, so, look at the battery. So this remote's kind of cool because. You can do one of two things. You can have a battery pack that's rechargeable, or if you kill that battery or something, you can actually bring this little tray with you, and you can replace this with regular okay. batteries. So it's kind of cool. Um, that's probably what that styrofoam is. These for. are brand new, he said, the gentleman who shipped it to us. For free! Well, he, he paid for shipping, so... Um, which is a great, great deal. So, we're going to do some uh, time lapse probably of trying to get this apart and we'll figure out mechanically what's wrong. So, you probably. Oh, uh, well. <clears throat> Halfway through this, my camera got full, which is fine. But what we discovered that this throttle stick was sticking, and it is because the bearings, these remotes actually have bearings, and these bearings are shot. They got stuff in them, or they're locked up, but I can't even spin the one. It's totally messed up. So that's the cause of uh, the sticky throttle. This side over here, there's a piece of plastic missing and a spring missing. And then uh, the um, the other portion of this is there's a piece of plastic that's broke right here that's supposed to hold these down, and it's broke. So that's not a real big deal, but uh, it can be fixed. So anyway, we'll continue on this later, but I just wanted to show you we did get it apart, and we did find the problem of uh, the sticky uh, the sticky side over here and stuff. So see you later. Alright, so Riley went to bed. It's late. It's the only time I get time to do anything. So, I'm going to look through my box of bearings. And just see if we can find any. <clears throat> or if I'm going to have to get some. But we, I, ha I have quite a few. I have quite a few small bearings from things. If worse comes to worse, we might be able to try to just rebuild those. But if I have some, I'll just replace them. There might be some in there, but let's keep going. Because I know I have some small ones. And actually, these right here are... What appears to be pretty close. These are all really nice, but they all look too big. There. There we go. Look at that. A whole tube. Let's see if it's the right, uh... See if it's the right kind. Mmm, they look too wide. Too wide. Mm, they're too small anyway. Wrong diameter. Almost got lucky on that one. There's still some in here though. A lot of these came out of hard drives. These all look too fat as well, too big. Yeah, too wide. So 
So our next best option might be just to try to clean those out. Everything I got is, is too wide. I don't think they're the right diameter anyway. I sure do have quite a bit of bearings in this box though. Uh, well because these are open race bearings, I was able to pop the uh, little race holder out. And we should be able to get the bearings out. We can clean them. We'll put them back together. I just couldn't expect these bearings to be like bad. I think if anything they just got dirt in them. So we'll take apart one at a time, we'll clean them, I'll put some speed cream back on there, skateboarder style, and we'll uh, hopefully be good to go. So I got a little denatured alcohol here. We'll give them a little clean and then I'll wipe them down. And we'll put it back together. You can see after cleaning, eh, those look pretty good. So I think maybe just some dirt in there. Hopefully. We'll see. Okay. Well, I got those uh, done. And they look really good. Really clean. Wiped up nice. I think we'll put it back together. I think it'll be fine. All right, I got a different non-magnetized pair of needle nose or uh, tweezers. Let's try this. Well, we got a little magnetic left in the balls, maybe. So I used to rebuild skateboard bearings instead of buying new ones. So I kind of know what I'm doing, even on this small scale. Kind of get them in there first. And the hard part is actually getting them to go up into the to the race. I need a small ring for the balls to sit on so they sit inside the actual race. There, I think I got them. Oh, I thought I did. A little more trickier than uh, than you'd think, but it's because I don't have anything to set the balls on. Let's, let's try assembling it this way. Because then at least the balls have something to sit on. And I can get them into the right spot. Ah. Uh, I'll be back when I get this. 
Oh my gosh, after a ton of work, she spins free. Put a few drops of my Bones Speed Cream, skateboard style, and we'll be off to the races. This one's good. Smooth as butter. Let's do the other one. Okay, boys and girls, so I managed to fix this by cleaning the bearings. Putting the bearings back together was a nightmare. For some reason, I tried to clean the bearings just in solution uh, with denatured alcohol. It didn't really work, so what I ended up doing is taking them apart, cleaning them really well, putting them back together. That was a bit challenging, however, we're all good. Now, there was some other things that was happening here. that I'd say I didn't really uh, fix, but I don't really need. So I did make this so it can be tightened. But um, yeah, anyway, so put it back together, tighten up all the switches, seems to work pretty well. And I tried to get these two to link together and actually managed to do that. So check this out. If you can see the, uh, this is the monitoring of the remote okay so if I go up you can see the throttle go up see the rudder see the elevator see the aileron so you can see all these things happen um, I don't know which one of these is connected to the there that one's connected to aux one one of these should be connected to the gear so if I flip this switch right here which is the one I have it set to if I flip it now you can see this remote is actually the one controlling it so indeed I can use this remote which was sent to me by a fan of the YouTube channel a long long time ago so thank you because I am still using this remote and its receiver for projects all the time. It is a fantastic old receiver. But this is a very low um, low transmitting transmitter and this one's actually doing the transmitting to the plane. This one's transmitting to this transmitter so it doesn't need to be a long range. And then when I want to take back over you can see this one's dead. So I just flip the switch, the other person can fly, and as soon as I see something going wrong, then I can take back over, and this one's dead. So that is super, super slick stuff. So anyway, I'll finish the video with Riley here, and I'll show her this stuff. She'll be excited. Peace out. Oh, that looks like a mess. What are you doing? Editing the video. I can't hear you very well. Editing the video. You're editing the video? So you got to the end and what's happening? Well, you told me when you wake, when I wake up, you would show me. You did, you just didn't film it. Hmm. So this is our outro? Yes. So tell me what your thoughts are. Long time. What? Craziness. <laughs> <laughs> a lot happening. Yeah. A lot of, Especially lot of... about the bearings. The bearings he had to do once and then you had to do them again because they weren't clean enough. And then it's a nightmare. Yeah, but it works. Yes, it did. It so does. that's what matters. Yeah. So anyway, well, what do you got to say for the outro? Um, do you know? <laughs> you don't know? No. All right, well, peace and love. God bless. Watch your Bible more. Bye.